Turbos, it is that time again. It is time for Turbo Talks Wrestling, and we're going to be giving you our pay-per-view uh, predictions in the pay-per-view. Today is going to be Extreme Rules. As of right now, we are just hours away from the Extreme Rules 2016 pay-per-view for WWE, and I'm here to give you my thoughts and predictions on who is going to win. Now, keep in mind, of course... I like to take things into consideration, and I don't like to let my heart decide. I let my brain decide. So I take a lot of like storyline factors and character direction into consideration when I make these predictions. So let's go ahead. Let's not waste any time and get started. Okay. So we first match we have is going to be uh, the kickoff show, which unfortunately these two have been relegated to do again, and that is Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin. I'll be honest, guys. These two have not gotten a whole lot of main TV time. I mean, I think I saw Corbin and Ziggler on the most recent episode of Main Event. Man, if you were talking about a way to make these two seem less important, then that would be it. I mean, I really, like, last Raw, they were not on there. Corbin and Ziggler were not on Raw. Um, that's a damn shame. I mean, both these two are, I mean, to a certain extent, Corbin is, and Ziggler, I mean, as we all know, is the most squandered talent, one of the most squandered talents on the main roster so far. Honestly, I don't see much point for Dolph to win, so I'm going to give this one to Corbin. Honestly, I mean, Corbin stands to gain more from this win than Ziggler does. I'm not a big fan of WWE's 50-50 booking, but I mean, hey, man, I mean, somebody's got to win, and I think Corbin stands to benefit the most from winning this match. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on that match because I know not even the WWE is going to waste a whole lot of time on it. It is just literally the kickoff show, so not important, I'm afraid. So next up, we have the United States Championship match. This is going to be Kalisto versus Rusev. Now, recently, the U.S. title couldn't, uh, you know, while we're talking about significant unimportance, the U.S. title definitely fits that to a bill. So, the United States Championship. Um, honestly, I'm giving this one to Rusev. They have booked him to look really strong over the past few weeks, only to set him up and knock him down when Cena comes back. Yes, Rusev is going to hold that title for a whole week. If that, I can't recall when Cena's coming back. I can't recall if it's tomorrow or if it is going to be uh, next Monday. But Rusev's championship reign is going to be that of Zack Ryder's almost. And that it's going to be extremely short. It is going to be extremely short because Cena's going to come in. He's going to beat Rusev. And I'm sure he's going to bring back the U.S. Open Challenge. Which is really cool. I will not even lie. I'm not a Cena fan by any means, but the United States Open Challenge was actually really, really cool. Seeing the United States Championship on Raw defended every single week. That was cool, man. I'm sorry. That was really cool, and I liked it. I don't, I'm not a fan of Cena. I need to make that clear. But the fact that he was trying to establish relevance with that belt, it made it, you know, it made it seem that much more important, you know, when it was with him. So, whew, it hurts to say that a little bit. It hurts to say that a little bit in my chest, but I'm going to give this one to Rusev and then Cena promptly after because Cena's going to come back and take it from Rusev. Or it could set up a really epic feud between him and Rusev again. I, I don't know. I just hope that Rusev still continues to look strong after that because seeing Rusev back in his old form where he was just a dominant, vicious monster, I loved it. And I think he needs to do more of that. I mean, he, he the past few weeks and almost breaking Kalisto in half, that was awesome. Let's not waste no time. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So next up, we have the WWE Tag Team Championship match. The New Day versus the Vaudevillains. So, I like the Vaudevillains. I like the New Day. Man, this is a tough one. But I am going to give this one to The New Day. Despite the fact that they have actually been making the Vaude villains talk more, look stronger, establish themselves as villains, I think it's too early for them to capture the tag team gold. A possible outcome would be the Vaude villains feuding with Enzo and Cass, but I don't think that's the way it's going to go. Um, tonight, I am definitely giving this one to the New Day. They are very close to breaking the record for longest tag team champions. Um, I'm giving it to the New Day. I'm giving it to the New Day. They're going to hold them, I think, until SummerSlam, and that's when we're going to see uh, the New Day be dethroned as the tag team champions. 
Um, sad because, you know, they have done really well, except for that segment on Monday. Uh, that was a little... It had its bright spots, but it was also kind of cringy. So, but the VOD villains, I really hope this doesn't slow down their momentum because they have been doing insanely well recently. And I really do want to see the VOD villains succeed and be a successful tag team and not go the route of the Ascension. Keeping the fingers crossed. All right. So up next is the Busos. That's what I like to call them. The Busos versus Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows of the club. It's the Bullet Club. So we got the Usos versus the Bullet Club. Um, oh, man, oh, man. In a Texas Tornado match. Well, if you know anything about a Texas Tornado match, that means everybody's all in the ring all at the same time. It's fucking chaos. It's complete chaos. The Usos, in my opinion, don't stand to gain anything from this, storyline-wise. It'd be pointless for them to win. Gallows and Anderson, on the other hand, have been needing to establish themselves as an incredibly dominant tag team in the eyes of the um, the main audience with WWE. I feel like the booking for Carl Anderson and uh, Gallows has been it's been iffy at best, and they are an incredibly talented tag team. I mean, these guys should not these guys should be coming in kicking ass, clearing house, just taking names. They should never be. Uh, looking or booked weak. They are an incredibly awesome tag team that also shouldn't be taken on single-handedly by Roman Reigns. They should be beating the living shit out of Reigns on a weekly basis, thus establishing the crowd to be like, oh my god, Roman gets beat every week, how is he possibly going to beat AJ Styles with the club there because the club beats up on him all the time? Yeah, it's a little thing called building character. Instead, they get just bulldozed by Reigns all the time. Anyway, I see Gallus and Anderson winning this because they stand to gain a whole lot more than the Usos do. And going in with one of my predictions for later, you do not want to have the Bullet Club, the whole Bullet Club, lose tonight against the most booed people in the WWE. You don't want that. Trust me, Vince. All right, so we have Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho in the first ever Asylum match, which is basically just a steel cage match with a whole bunch of random shit scattered everywhere. So this is Ambrose's creation. This is Ambrose's creation here. To me, it would be insanely dumb to have Dean Ambrose lose in the first ever Asylum match. That's like having The Undertaker lose the first ever Hell in a Cell match. It just... I don't know, man. It wouldn't make sense to me, but honestly, um, with this match, Jericho, okay, Jericho, his purpose at this point should be to help others with their progress. Dean did beat him at payback. He did beat him at payback, which is a, a win that Ambrose seriously needed. In my opinion, they need to keep that momentum going for Ambrose, because we're going to be getting close to money in the bank here soon, and I really, really want to see Ambrose be one of the top contenders for the Money in the Bank briefcase, and hopefully don't waste it on guys like Sheamus again. Honestly, I see Ambrose winning this match because, again, it's one of those things that he seeks to gain more. Ambrose has kind of been brushed off to the side ever since uh, Reigns won the WWE Championship. And we all know that Ambrose was the one that had the hottest performances going in to going into WrestleMania. So why cool down his momentum? You have an excellent commodity with Dean Ambrose, so I see no reason to not let him win this match and establish himself really well against a six-time world champion. Jericho gains nothing from this. Absolutely nothing. Because if they win tonight, that means that this is going to just completely end this feud between Jericho and Ambrose, because while it has been moderately entertaining, it just needs to end. It's like Corbin and Ziggler. It just needs to end. So next we have what I feel is going to be the match of the evening, the Intercontinental Championship four-way match. We have The Miz, who is the current Intercontinental Champion, versus Kevin Owens, versus Cesaro, versus Sami Zayn. Now, each one of these guys could seek to gain a whole lot from this match. I mean, The Miz has been going on his hottest streak since... since 
a long time. It's been a good while since The Miz has been relevant. And we owe a lot of that to Maurice for helping him become relevant again. Because otherwise, none of us would give an earthly shit. And I don't really think many of us give an earthly shit. Kevin Owens, I think there is bigger things in store for Kevin. Rumor has it right now, Vince is really high on him right now. And he's seeking for a more top-level push because Kevin Owens is insanely entertaining. The guy's funny on commentary, he's entertaining to watch in the ring, his backstage segments are gold, people love him, except for the people that still think, you know, heels shouldn't act like heels. You get these people all the time that are like, Kevin Owens is such an asshole, he's so mean and all that. He's a heel. It's what they do. Jesus, people. So, Kevin Owens, I don't think he's going to come out of this winner, even though he would, again, gain a lot from it. He would be a three-time Intercontinental Champion at that point, which is awesome for him. And Kevin Owens definitely is a person who benefits from having a champion because he can back up all the shit that he talks. Cesaro also stands to gain a lot from this because while Cesaro, in my opinion, is main event talent, Mike Sills aside, his in-ring work more than makes up for his lack of Mike skills. I think Cesaro could definitely benefit from an Intercontinental Championship run. It would definitely have him coming back in with a full head, uh, full head of steam. And I think he would make an excellent Intercontinental Champion. Now, on the flip side to that, Sami Zayn. This is actually my prediction for who is going to win this match. I predict that Sami Zayn is going to walk away with this. Now, the interesting thing is this is going to basically just pour bleach into the wound of Kevin, of Kevin Owens. His best, his former best friend, who he's been feuding with ever since, well, well before his WWE days. And as we all know, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are great friends in real life. Just the best of friends always put on the best matches together. I predict Sami Zayn is going to walk away the winner with this. I think that Sami, uh, having a good, raw, a good long championship push, is going to do a lot of good for him. Um, because Sammy, you know, he's, he's like Ambrose. He's one of those guys that it doesn't hurt him if he loses, but you don't want to have him lose all the time. And this would definitely give something uh, for the crowd to be behind Sammy with, because Sammy, he's just an eternal face. The guy can't be a bad guy, man, I, I swear. I personally think that uh, Sammy's going to walk out of this one, the Intercontinental Champion, but I think it is going to be an absolutely awesome match. And like normal, it's going to be the match of the night. No doubt. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. So next to last, we have the WWE Women's Championship. Charlotte, the current women's champion, versus Natalia in a submission match, and Ric Flair is banned from ringside. Now remember, the stipulations here is you can only win via submission, and if Ric Flair comes to the ring in any way, Charlotte immediately forfeits the women's championship, and Natty is the new women's champion. Now, there's a swerve. There's a swerve somewhere in this. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. I There's got to be something somehow, because Natty isn't going to tap by normal means. Uh, Charlotte could show an insanely dirty side, and she could injure Natty's leg, or something of that effect to where Natty is going to be forced to tap. Um, Rick, I, I have a really hard time believing that Natty is going to walk out of this the winner. As much as I love Natty and I love that this feud has been making her look insanely strong, I don't see Natty coming out of this one the winner, unfortunately. I mean, as much as I'd love that to be, there are bigger plans in place for Charlotte. Um, what those might be at this time, I'm not sure, but I'm predicting a, uh, a feud with Paige coming up here soon. I don't think they're going to go back to Becky Lynch, unfortunately. Becky, who is conspicuously absent from this pay-per-view again. Um, my reasoning for the feud with Paige and Charlotte is because of the whole thing with Alberto Del Rio, which is still weird to me. That's just weird, man. Uh, the older dudes dating much younger women than them, it's... I don't know, man. I'm, I'm cool and accepting of many different types of, you know, lifestyles and relationships... That one to me is just weird. That's just weird. It just strikes me as a sex thing. But we're not going to get into that. That's really uncomfortable to talk about. So Charlotte's going to come out the winner. Point blank. Charlotte's going to retain. She's going to retain all the way to SummerSlam. And last 
but not least, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. And it is an extreme rules match, means anything goes. The only way to win is by pinfall or submission. In other words, no DQ whatsoever. So, Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles, my man. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I already feel my headache coming on, man. It sucks. Ugh. Okay. I'm just going to get it out of the way. Roman's winning this one, guys. Roman's going to win. We all know Roman's going to win. Despite the fact that AJ is the more popular superstar, he's selling more merch than Roman, he gets better crowd reaction than Roman, despite all of that, Roman's going to win. It's just that simple. Roman's going to win. I don't know how. I don't know what way. I think it's going to be a good match, despite Roman himself. Um, these two have had a pretty good feud. I'm not even going to lie. These two have had a pretty good feud. Um, I can't give any of that to Reigns. This has all been AJ. I really, I'm sorry, guys. You will never... I have a big problem with this feud, but I don't want to get into it because that's going to extend this video by like another 10 minutes. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know what way, but Roman is going to win this match. He will. I pray it is not after him, you know, getting the beating of his life, which I do enjoy seeing. I pray that it's not by one spear. I pray that it is not by one spear. Because AJ Styles hitting Roman with the Styles Clash in like eight phenomenal forearms and Roman still not going down, yet one spear takes down AJ. I'm sorry, I hate that finish, I hate that finish, I hate that finish, I hate that finish because it is so insulting to AJ. Now, if it's a matter of Roman clocks AJ over the head with a chair like eight times, then fuck it, yeah, I mean, that's believable. That is like, okay, AJ's, AJ's probably dead. He's not getting up from that one. Yeah. Could it be that the club is going to turn on AJ? I don't know, man. I don't know. Regardless, I think this will be a good match, though. I think the ending is going to be shit. Let's get that out of the way. The ending's going to be shit. But I think it'll be a good match overall. So guys, that is going to do it for my uh, WWE Extreme Rules 2016 predictions. So, what do you think of my predictions? Do they fall in line with yours? What are your predictions for tonight? And do you just go ahead and share them in the comment section below, please? I want to know what your predictions are. And make sure if you uh, you know find somebody interested in watching this video over the next six hours to kill time until Extreme Rules starts, go ahead and give this video a share, won't you? And most of all, subscribe to the channel, please. Go ahead and subscribe because we are going to be doing more and more wrestling themed stuff. I want to do Raw reviews. It's just Raw has been kind of mediocre the past few weeks and I didn't want to waste the energy on it. So, thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you tonight with our payback or payback extreme rules reactions so guys hopefully i won't have a terrible headache this time i might just drink a whole lot before i do it might make it more entertaining i don't know but guys we will see you tonight with our extreme rules reactions till then guys catch you later